So, um, in terms of access, um, well, you know, it, we've talked about the last mile and, and, you know, getting access to the network physically, uh, getting a connection, making a connection. However, we are still faced with the problem of authentication, um, particularly of the user. Uh, although at this point we're not, you know, we've got, we, we will discuss later, um, uh, distinctions between um, node authentication and user authentication. But um, at the moment, uh, just, you know, primarily looking at uh, user authentication, you know, making sure that the right people do have access to our network and the wrong people don't. Um, so we've got... Uh, a, a, a couple of uh, sessions here that we'll talk about uh, different aspects of that. Um, first off, um, uh, just you know, we we have the problems of uh, impersonation, um, masquerading, uh, people uh, pretending to be our employees or whatever. Uh, uh, again, clients, customers, whatever. Um, people who legitimately should have access to our network. And so um, we need to address that. But there's also uh, uh, issues of, for example, uh, piggybacking um, or uh, hijacking of sessions. Um, so, you know, spoofing is, is not the only thing we need to address. And, um, certain types of authentication systems are going to be more suitable to certain types of problems. And we need to uh, know what the issues are. Um, in our regard, you know, similarly to our decision about the aspects of security that are most important to us. Is it uh, confidentiality? Is it availability? Is it integrity? You know, and, and uh, what do we do with these, uh, you know, the, the different problems, different tools are going to help us address different aspects of them. So we need to make sure that the tools we are using uh, match the uh, types of problems that we are facing and that are most important to us. Um, so uh, we, of course, have we've talked about access control. Um, we have uh, talked about different types of authentication. And of course, um, multi-factor authentication um, in certain situations where, uh, you know, we, we need more protection that, you know, none of the authentication systems are perfect. Um, and and uh, so having multiple forms of authentication, of course, is, is going to address the different shortfalls with the different systems. Um, so, uh, we have different protocols, uh, that look at this issue of remote access, which is, um, complicated by the fact that, uh, we are not dealing with a single system with, you know, somebody sitting at a terminal in the office where we may physically control all of the connections. Um, we are talking about a situation where people may be, uh, you know, dialing in over a modem, uh, increasingly dialing in, uh, well, not exactly dialing in, but connecting via a public network. Um, we, you know, we've also got different types of devices that are, uh, clouding the issue and complicating the situation. However, um, we've, 
you know, we've got the different uh, types of connections, and, and we do not have control, uh, the, the same type of control that we have uh, in a pure office situation. So, for remote access, we need uh, additional protocols. Uh, one of which is Password Authentication Protocol, or PAP, and that's a good description of it. Um, PAP, that is. Uh, because this uses a clear text, reusable, that is static, password. Um, so, you know, anybody uh, looking at the session is going to see the authentication credentials, the, you know, the password. So, um, this is, uh, as shall we say, not preferred in, in the current environment. Um, you know, there, there may be areas where, uh, or, or situations where you know um, uh, you can manage uh, who gets access to the network and, and uh, you know, somehow, I, I don't know. But those, those situations these days are going to be few and far between. So, um, this, is, this is not exactly preferred. Um, now, uh, what is uh, somewhat better, and particularly in, in remote access over a public network type situation, is the challenge handshake authentication protocol. And when someone makes an attempt to log in, this system will challenge that login with a nonce. Again, uh, nonce, salt, seed, uh, initialization vector, all, all of this, uh, you know, same concept with different terms in different situations. Basically, um, it just uh, a piece of random, hopefully random, and we've talked about random and the importance of random. Um, anyways, a piece of random data that is being used to uh, uh, cloud uh, the ease of determining what's going on. So, in this case, uh, the nonce, the random number, is sent to us as a challenge, and in order to prove who we are, we take the what we know, uh, you know, our, our password. We do not submit the password. We uh, hash the password with the nonce, which of course gives us a completely different result than just uh, hashing the password itself. And um, since it's a random number, again, it's um, generated hopefully randomly, and again, we've talked about that, um, on each trial, each, each login. So the, the nonce that you are sent is going to be different every time, and that is going to change the hash every time. So this is not static. Um, the actual final credential that is sent back to the server is not um, going to be the same. It's not static, it's not reusable. And so we have a situation where, yes, we can use a password, uh, but with a kind of a proviso um, that we have to do this hashing. And in fact, um, now you can say that we have uh, multi-factor authentication because we have generally when we're doing this, um, we will do it with some uh, physical device which will have um, the 
protocol, the hashing protocol built into it, and uh, possibly even a serial number or something, which gets included with the hash. So again, um, the company knows which device we have been issued, and so, uh, you know, which uh, serial number should be included in their calculation of the hatch. And again, if we uh, have everything correct, then yes, we get on. So there's that. And then there is the extensible authentication protocol. And unfortunately, you can't say an awful lot about it because it's extensible. You can add different types of uh, authentication to the protocol as needed.